Good evening, sir. Uh, today, on 16th of October, we are here for the presentation on the topic of ambiguity in context-free grammar. Me, uh, Kushmita Dharagupta, and uh, my group member, Ushab Sina, Pranti Raj, and Kushmita Parmukar are here for this presentation. So, let us start. First of all, we uh, see the contents where uh, here first uh, we uh, give an introduction where we elaborate what is CFG with an example and later on we will discuss what is rightmost and leftmost revision and then we will elaborate some gate level examples and now continue. So first we start the introduction. What is context with grammar? As we all know, grammar is consists of a finite set of production rules. And this context free grammar also consists of finite set of grammar rules, uh, which is denoted as NTPS, where N is the non-terminal symbol, P is the terminal symbol, T is the production rule, and S is the starting symbol. So we move on an example to uh, elaborate the thing. So, CFG uh, is denoted by NTPS. So, here N is capital S, T is denoted by small a and small b, starting symbol is S, and production rules are uh, S, which is uh, SS or ASV or epsilon. So, we here we are uh, asked to uh, convert this grammar into a string that is AB, AA, BB. So for this, we have to expand this grammar and that's why we need some parsing. So first here, we are expanding this S starting symbol by SS. In the left side of S, we are expanding, expanding this with ASB and the middle S, we are expanding with uh, SN. And the right side, uh, we are expanding with ASB and again ASB. Uh, so that we can see at this end, we get this string which is required A, B, A, A, B, B. So this is why uh, we are doing this expansion to get this required uh, string and this. Uh, I will ask to Ustav elaborate the next thing. Hello. Hello, Sushmita. Can you please stop sharing um, so that I can sh share my screen? Uh, you can share. I am sharing. You can see. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. As, as Sushmita said earlier, that we are here, and our topic is how to know the ambiguity of a string, and for uh, and to know that how to know how we know about the string ambiguity, we have to know that how what is CFG and what is derivation means leftmost and rightmost derivation because indeed it is a property to know how we can and determine whether a string is <coughs> uh, is a uh, ambiguous or not so it, what is first we have to know what is leftmost derivation it is obtained by applying some production rule to the leftmost variable in each step and rightmost derivation is opposite to it. It is obtained in the rightmost variable. Let us uh, conclude some example, please. Next slide, please. Here, the, it is the rightmost derivation where the x is our variables and the hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Uh, so, in this example, the it is uh, this in this uh, left portion we have show we have shown that uh, it's expanded with x plus uh, x plus uh, and the right and later, on, have, uh, later on we have shown the uh, leftmost derivation to the uh, using a part the tree and using this diagram the uh, we can conclude that these strings they are this string that is uh, which is x plus x is totally belong to this CFG and we can say this is uh, this, uh, this string is totally ambiguous string and later on uh, Pranthi will explain the uh, next part. 
Okay. Now I am going to explain what is ambiguous context-free grammar. So, uh, context-free grammar is called ambiguous if there exists more than one leftmost derivation or more than one rightmost derivation or a string, uh, which is generated by a grammar. There will also be more than one derivation tree for a string in ambiguous grammar. Suppose here we give an example of ambiguous context-free grammar. Uh, suppose we have a context-free grammar G with production rule is defined as A S B or B S A or S S or E. There can be more than one uh, rightmost derivation for string A B A B, which are S uh, S defined uh, S, which can be defined as S S uh, as we mentioned above the production rule, or S S can be defined as uh, uh, at the rightmost derivation, we using rightmost derivation, we define mm. A S B, and then again we expand that non-terminal S uh, by A B. Now again, again as you can see there is one uh, S A B, there is one non-terminal that is S, and now uh, mm. again we expand that S as A S B. Now again after then after expanding there is one more non-terminal s that is can be defined as a b a b now can i am request to get, go to next slide now we are going to know some of the important facts of uh, ambiguous context-free grammar if a context-free grammar g is ambiguous language generated by grammar lg may or may not be con uh, ambiguous it is not always possible to convert ambiguous CFG to unambiguous CFG. Only some of the ambiguous CFG can be converted to unambiguous CFG. And on the third point, there is no algorithm to convert ambiguous CFG to non unambiguous CFG. The fourth point is there always exi exists a unambiguous CFG corresponding to unambiguous CFL. The fifth point is deterministic CFL are always unambiguous and are parsed by LR parser. Now, and I will request Sushmita to explain the first example. Yes. Uh, so we are taking an example, uh, the grammar G, which has a production rule of X, which is uh, of X plus X or X star X or X. And we need to know, we need to know is it ambiguous or not. And for this, we need to expand, of course, so uh, here we are expanding the uh, rightmost derivation and leftmost derivation. So after expanding, as we can see, x is expanded with x plus x, and uh, uh, following x, is this x is all, uh, expanded with a and terminated, and this uh, other x is also expanded with x star x, and the rest of the x are, are terminated with small a, and here uh, as same as the left uh, leftmost derivation. So after expanding, we all can see uh, we are getting a string which is a plus a star a in the rightmost derivation. And same as leftmost derivation, we are getting a plus a star a. As these both are same and we are getting more than one uh, uh, leftmost and rightmost derivation, we can conclude this the gamma is ambiguous. Uh, now, so please explain. The second example. In example two, there is a simple question that we uh, consider the following statement about the context-free grammar, which is that the grammar is G S to S F and S A B and S B A and let's say S, which is ambiguous. So here they are saying that G is ambiguous. G produces all strings equal numbers of A's and B's. G can be accepted by deterministic P D. And now our question is which combination below express the true statement about G. So using parser tree as uh, say and LMD and, and RMD, you, we can simply determine whether this is ambiguous or not. And using those parser trees, which uh, we have concluded that this grammar is ambiguous. So, so our statement one, which is G is ambiguous. Yes, it is ambiguous. And statements to what is what it is saying that G produces all strings with equal number of A's and B's. And by by our conclusion, statement to state that the all number, but it can can't generate a a b b string. So statement two is incorrect. And statement three.
Sorry for the hit. So, so uh, can you please explain the example? Too? Hello, Pranti. Uh, sorry. Uh, now we are going to explain. Uh, we are going to number question three. That is, which of the following statement is false? So here we are giving three, op three options. There is contextual language, such as all the contextual grammar, generating them are ambiguous. Number two option, an ambiguous contextual grammar always has a unique first string for each string of the language generated by it. Number third option is both deterministic and non-deterministic schools on automata always accept the same set of language. The number four option, a finite set of string from one and to which always a regular language. So the solution of this question is option A is correct. Because uh, it is ambiguous. CSL is always because for ambiguous CSL, all CSG corresponding to it are ambiguous. Number D is also correct. Because as ambiguous CSG has a unique first tree for each tree of the language generated by But number three is false. Because we all know uh, as some language are accepted by non deterministic PDA but not by deterministic PDA. And the last option it is also true. As we know that a finite state of string is always regular. So the option which is false is C. Yes, some languages created by computer systems. So as conclusion, we can say that ambiguity is a common feature of natural languages, where it is tolerated and dealt with in a very variety of ways. In programming languages, where there should be only one interpretation uh, of each statement, ambiguity must be removed when possible. Often we can achieve this by rewriting grammar in an equivalent, unambiguous form. So that's the all thing. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, very good, very good. I have some questions for you. I'm putting all the questions uh, right now. You take your time and answer uh, one of them. Uh, first of all, uh, you are uh, absolutely correct. But tell me, is there any algorithm is there? Uh, uh, make your presentation on. I think that will be great. Uh, yeah. Uh, that uh, not conclusion yeah there uh, there are some language the, you uh, sometimes you are using uh, the term language and grammar the language and grammar are two different things sometimes certain languages can be found which there is no grammar whether ambiguous and unambiguous please uh, go to the textbooks there are some languages even in context free uh, which can be accepted but there is, is no such grammar that is you have to know and there are uh, j mostly and also uh, a language can have many grammars if they if it can have 10 grammars if nine grammars are ambiguous if one grammar is unambiguous then the you can say language is unambiguous is it correct yes. uh, and yes. that, is, that is one thing and another thing is to find unambiguous grammar it's a uh, it, till now there is no such algorithm you just trial and hit method there is no algorithm yeah so you have to find it out uh, that way and another thing is uh, when Shushmita started parsing the first slide that is you started from the top down modes that is you start from S and go to the derivation and and another way uh, that is top down and another approach is bottom up and you mentioned that all grammar can be done by lr1 or lrk basically not a, a k means k symbols look ahead but uh, k is one that is lr1 also good uh, good enough in fact all alg programming languages are basically lr1 or slr1 or lalr1 so that will be covered our in uh, bottom up parsing case uh, but the best thing is top down parsing that is LL1 uh, till uh, Python 3.9 has released and it has an option for LL1 that uh, Shushpita has started from top down parsing. But uh, I again want to mention this context free grammar not everything is uh, uh, not everything is solvable problem like to find a lang to find a grammar 
for a particular language you can find you cannot find there is always some uh, languages they are they are unambiguous but it is very difficult to get the grammar but we take the uh, subset ll1 for the top down parsing and the top down parsing there should not be any left recursion i think you have to remove left recursion that is no such rule start with the same variable and uh, first function of all the right hand right rule should be disjoint and first of any variable an intersection of follow up that should be null if the variable is uh, nullable that it it produce that it should be intersection that but that is not the guarantee that it is the ll1 grammar so and ll1 grammar you know it can uh, that is uh, two way it can be passed one is brute force that is always backtrack mode that shushmita told in the show in the first is that is basically hand parsing backtrack on uh, and you cannot the computer cannot look ahead so uh, it's very good and you can you can ask also me the questions and if you can try my doubts about it i have no particular doubt good presentation but uh, uh, yes you can carry on yes you can ask me questions also yes sir yeah sir, uh, there is no such questions but uh, yeah anything don't yeah. you want to know because uh, this portion I, uh, i i could cover in the classes but i make a video on it you can ask any question but one thing is i must tell this bottom up parsing is difficult because bottom up parsing you have to take the handle first you have to detect top down parsing is easier and bottom up parsing you have to put your epsilon symbols and make a right handle and so that you can basically uh, you you are basically reducing your right hand side to it uh, so that's it Uh, any questions you have okay any questions from your side good good presentation uh, thank you sir